So hi folks, uh, my name is Tushar Mathur. I'm the VP Engineering here at Dream11. Um, today I'm here to present a brand new library called Zero HTTP. Um, okay, just to give you some context for Dream11, we are a fantasy sports gaming platform, kind of like DraftKings and FanDuel in the States. Uh, users come on a platform, they make a team, they join contests, and they win money based on the player's performance on the field. At a very high level, this is how our, our architecture looks like. We have a microservice mesh on the right and the clients on the left. The clients use our edge layer to query data from these services. If you look at a typical use case for us, we get a concurrency of around 5 million users in a, on a big game that produces around a throughput of 1 million requests per second. And this, we reach the, these kind of numbers very easily. To serve this kind of traffic, you deploy tens and thousands of servers in production. But this is not the hard part. This is. Typically, we get a huge surge of traffic whenever a player is playing really well. Uh, we can reach from, you know, starting from a few thousand requests per second to a million requests per second in a matter of minutes. And what we do to scale our infra, because auto scaling doesn't work at this scale, we typically predict the peak traffic expected for a particular match and scale the whole infra for the whole match. Obviously, our systems, our infrastructure becomes extremely sensitive to the performance of the systems that are running that, uh, running the running on the edge layer. That being said, last season, November 2020, we wanted to add push capabilities to our infrastructure, meaning the services should be able to push messages direct, directly to our clients using WebSockets. It seemed really simple. All we had to do was pick any decent framework that had WebSocket support. Didn't seem like a challenge. We had four weeks to do this job, except we had this checklist. We couldn't use any framework which is open sourced. We had to use a battle tested framework. A bleeding framework, bleeding edge framework at our scale could have catastrophic problems. We wanted functional scala. We've seen massive productivity gains and we want to continue with it. Zero support was really, really needed. WebSockets is a stateful system. We wanted managed, we wanted to leverage STMs and Zstream capabilities. So Zero capability, Zero support was really what was. And needless to say, the system had to be performed. The checklist was done and we were all set. We thought these, these are not very high standards. All we need to do is look at the uh, reasonable frameworks out there. And uh, within a day, we'll be able to figure, finalize on the framework. But then after a week, this is what the team came up with. We had HTTP4S, a framework which is backed by purely functional Scala and a reasonable support for Zero on one end, giving the worst performing framework and we had Vertex, a framework which is primarily targeted at Java developers, blowing everybody else out of the way in terms of performance. They really don't care about functional programming. And of course, uh, no support for Zero. These, was, these were the two extreme cases on that spectrum. So um, after two weeks in almost, we decided uh, we, we couldn't find a single framework. For our, for our use case, we couldn't, we couldn't find a framework that checked all our boxes and the deadline was approaching. So we decided, considering the timelines, we would drop investing time in these frameworks instead build something of our own. Fortunately, Dream11 has built expertise over the years to build highly scalable, highly performing systems already. So, and more importantly, we wanted to reduce unknowns by using a new library so close to the season. So we went uh, out and we started writing this library ourselves, it gave us more control, it was easier to maintain, it theoretically it reduced risks for us. 
clearly the team was really pumped about this idea two weeks new framework to build and going live with it this library we call geo http initially it started only had one use case to support web sockets and what it the and it wanted to support web sockets really well the most performant way the most ergonomic way of writing socket a uh, web socket based app that was its goal slowly it grew to add more standard http features uh, like get requests post requests and became like a full fledged framework and this is literally how we deployed to production a few lines of import no ceremonious syntax and this is actual production code we had a, have a health route and there is a pattern match on the request and we are able to deploy a socket app on that uh, particular route and we were able to go live with this this was purely functional scala needed support for zero and guess what we made it made it in time for the season uh zero http fared really well in production uh, even under high stress there zero outages throughout the season however we really sucked at performance we were worse than http for us uh this wasn't surprising considering we were all we used to functional uh, frameworks fun functional programming being slow um so once the season was over we thought we will invest time and make http zero http at least as fast as it should be for us that was our goal for the next season which is going to be in april 2021 so we started off scratching our heads thinking about various kind of optimizations that we could perform on the uh, http engine so we started off with some basic micro optimization uh, tons of fixes week on week deploying to production we optimized a lot of memory uh, allocations along this process this improved the performance significantly and we were able to achieve performance very close to that of http for us the next step for us was tuning threads this had a massive impact on performance we added some kind of intelligence to process different kind of workloads in different kind of thread pools we didn't stop here at this point we were beyond way beyond http for us's performance uh, numbers we didn't stop here we decided to relook at our core we re we re uh, wrote the core multiple number of times took the guts out reengineered put it back in all this was done with a single focus in mind to improve performance week by week bit by bit we extracted every quantum of performance that was possible from an http library and i'm really proud to show you the results we were able to achieve this is what zero http gives you in terms of benchmarks when compared to other frameworks not only did we beat http for us we objectively speaking were fa the fastest framework in our benchmarks we, we had gone beyond vertex and this was insane we were able to deploy this in production it's been live for the last 3 months serving 5 million concurrent users with barely 20 instances no issues extremely predictable performance and now going back to our criteria zero http has been battle tested at dream learn scale it's the most performant framework out there it has purely functional api and has needed support for zero so if you care about functional programming and you want all that zero goodness without compromising on performance this is the library you should definitely check out it's open source today you not talked about it before this talk and you can go to dream11 slash zero http um and we'd love to know your feedback try it out it has some rough edges you're still working on it we are constantly still optimizing in terms of performance and we're looking for feature requests and would love to see your support by uh, you giving a star on the report that's it